I'm going to hand this directly over to our panel here to present the perspectives on developing a college-wide interdisciplinary policy course. Good afternoon. My name is Sharla Willis, and I'm joined here by Ellie Dodge, Mary Lou Chialfi, Mike Trombley, and Monique Roy. We will be sharing our experience developing a college-wide interdisciplinary course. Today, I'm going to start our session with a description of the process that we have followed to develop the course. Throughout the process, we have collected data from those who have developed, taught, and taken the course, and I will be sharing some of that data today. Finally, the majority of our time will be an opportunity for you to ask questions of our panel, which is made up of the people involved in the development and teaching of this course. Policy, an interprofessional approach, is the first class to be open to students from all five graduate degree programs in the College of Graduate and Professional Studies. One of our goals with the course is to provide students from these disciplines the opportunity to work together within the class as they learn from each other and from instructors representing the disciplines. I want to briefly describe the course development process. Since we have many of those involved in the process represented here, I will not be going into detail, but the panel will be able to answer questions and discuss the process in more depth. The idea for an interdisciplinary course originated with the program directors of the five CGPS programs. They shared a common interest in developing a college-wide course spurred on by the accreditation requirements for the public health program, which I represent. The program directors decided upon the general structure and the goals of the course, then moved to form a curriculum oversight team for the course. Each program director identified a subject matter expert from their program. Monique and I facilitated the process and ensured that the program director's vision was maintained during the development process. Mike Trombley joined the team, bringing his expertise as an instructional designer. We met as a team and communicated regularly to develop learning objectives, select the textbooks, decide upon primary assignments and assessments, and the general course structure. Once these were decided upon, the team divided the work to select readings and to record lectures addressing the primary topics and ensuring the representation of the perspectives of each of the disciplines. As the course development went on, it became clear that writing the assignments and discussion descriptions would be more effective to be finalized by one person in order to maintain a consistent voice throughout the course. Mary Lou Cialfi, the SME for Public Health, worked closely with Mike to refine these instructions and the syllabus. Once the course was in Blackboard, the full team and the program directors reviewed the course before it was offered to students. The course was offered in Fall A where we had two sections of nine and 12 students led by the SMEs for social work and public health. It is currently being offered in Fall B by the SME from Applied Nutrition and a public health adjunct faculty member with sections of 13 and 15 students. It will be offered again in spring with faculty representing education and social work. The course is eight weeks, fully online, with a planned cap of 20 students. While our first two offerings have contained only public health students, as it is a requirement for our program, the goal is to have all programs represented in each course. Students work within groups of five to develop policy analyses. While each student writes their own analysis, they work as a group to provide feedback on each other's work, contributing the perspectives of their individual disciplines to the process. Students use their written policy to develop a two to three minute oral testimony for a legislative body. And in the last week, they write a reflection on their experience applying the interprofessional competencies throughout the course. Once the course development was completed, a survey was sent to all program directors and members of the curriculum oversight team asking them to describe the opportunities, challenges, and strengths of the interprofessional course development. Much of this data was presented at the recent Interprofessional Education Conference and can be seen in our related poster that is displayed over here. I encourage you to take time to read the direct quotes from the team members there. To summarize, 
They found the development process to be an opportunity to enhance awareness among students of the perspectives common to other disciplines, thereby potentially increasing collaboration in the field. Challenges did arise, particularly related to incorporating competencies from multiple disciplines and in finding the right case study. The team also found it a challenge to design a course by consensus and to move from the conceptual to the concrete in course development, issues which the panel can address further. But the challenges also became part of the strengths that team members identified as we worked together to identify and develop a case study relevant to all disciplines and develop strategies to incorporate the perspectives of the multiple disciplines into the course. Data from students' fall A course evaluations has allowed us to incorporate the student experience with the course into revisions to the design. As is common with student evaluations, there were a range of opinions on the group nature of the work. For example, these two quotes show that one student felt the current structure of working on individual projects and receiving peer feedback during the group was very effective, while another offered suggestions for improvement, including making it a true group project and having everybody work on one analysis. Students also offered suggestions for other changes that might enhance how future students experience the course, such as providing a sample policy analysis on a different topic to give further guidance on the structure of the written policy analysis assignment. One issue that student comments helped us identify as a potential problem was a misperception about the course lectures. This comment here about a lack of instructor lectures each week seemed odd to us at first reading, since there are lectures from one or more instructors every week. In reviewing the course from a student's perspective, though, we realized that due to the multiple instructors in the class, there was not a single course lecturer giving a lecture every week. And it wasn't always clear that the lectures were being provided by the subject matter experts who developed the course. We decided it may be helpful for students if we label each lecture with faculty member's name and their title, and also provide an introductory lecture that clearly explains the unique design of the course, and that faculty members provide the lectures throughout the course. That was just a case of us assuming that the students understood what we had been trying to achieve here. Overall, though, the feedback we received from students was positive, as well as helpful to understanding their perspective on the course. We were encouraged to read that students saw the potential benefits to their educational experience and professional development of this interprofessional interaction, such as offered within the class. The final perspective that we gathered was through a course reflection discussion with the two instructors who taught the course in the fall. Based on their experience, they identified areas where the students excelled and where further tools and guidance could be incorporated into future offerings of the course. Based on their feedback, priority lists were developed, identifying revisions to instruction wording to provide more clarity and additional tools that could be incorporated before the course runs again in spring. A separate list for larger structural changes that may improve the educational experience for the students and the instructors was developed as well. And those will be going into effect for the summer uh, course. I would like to introduce our panel at this time. Mary Lou Cialfi was the SME for public health and also took a leadership in finalizing the course. She also taught the course during its first offering. Mike Trombley was the instructional designer for the course and worked with the curriculum oversight team from the beginning of the process. Monique Roy is the assistant program director of the education program, and she represented the program directors and their vision as a member of the curriculum oversight team. Ellie Dodge is a program director for the applied nutrition program and was involved from the beginning in envisioning the course and the process of development. We welcome your questions at this time and would like to just open it up to you to direct any questions towards board. There we go. Thank you. Um, oh, some of these are louder than others. Um, 
putting the challenges of actually developing this one course aside, I'm, for the moment, I'm curious about the barriers to recognizing where these shared possibilities are, exist between the different programs that comprise CGPS. And what are, the, you know, what are the barriers to taking advantage of the different um, subjects where programs can be developing courses with one another or sharing courses? Um, so. Uh, so I think that it's an interesting kind of nexus we have there because as a master's program, you want to preserve the integrity of the specific discipline, but also understand that, um, like Dean Wilson was saying, there may be students who are interested in a one-off course coming into the program as a non-matriculated student or taking it for professional interest. Um, and so I think we are a pretty collaborative bunch as program directors, and so this was a really interesting process when we started. Um, for me, the barriers are not so much technical in nature as it is in um, understanding where it's really important to maintain the integrity of your discipline versus where there is significant overlap that everyone can come to the table and kind of bring something into. And so when I very first started, we talked a lot about research methods. We often all have some different flavor of research method in our classes. Uh, in our programs, and so why can't we have a standardized research methods course? And as I spoke with the other program directors and we really mapped everything out, it became really apparent that because we run an eight-week course, to make sure that the students felt well mired in their discipline, something like that was really needed to be discipline specific. But there are certain areas that we have since identified, and policy was one of those, where we thought that there would be a lot of kind of rich opportunity for the students to engage in interprofessional spaces like they will be asked to do when they are in the workplace or may already be asked to do in the workplace. Um, and so we've bounced around other topics as, you know, as we've worked on this course uh, to see where those over overlapping interests are without compromising the integrity of the specific discipline. And so from a director standpoint, that's my thought on barriers. But I would add for operationally speaking, to go from development to having this product, making sure that all of the disciplines actually know about the course is something that we're still working on. How do we, you know, not everybody has electives that are bright yellow. For example, in education, we have the generalist program, but they're stacked with all of our education courses. So we don't have a policy course like this, so we're trying to introduce that. And how do we do it? Do we do it through student support only? Are we having people in enrollment talk about it when students are first coming in, that these will be new and exciting options? So communicating to our matriculated students and then perhaps a wider audience of people who do want to take one-off courses who already have a you know, a specific discipline that, that they're in and they just want to enhance what they have. So we keep those things in mind because as Martha was talking about developing these courses that are just helping people who are already professionals, we're always thinking of that in the background, like how could somebody use this in a different way? I'm going to add one more thing, Chris, and that is that one of the foundations for this course was the interprofessional education competencies. And um, if you're not familiar with them, they have four domains, which is you know values and ethics, roles and responsibilities, leadership and teamwork. So, like those domains themselves, I think could be foundational for for courses across the college. You know, we we all need to have uh, leadership and management courses, so that's ripe for um, an interprofessional approach as well and certainly values and ethics as well. Thank you. Hi. Um, so this may be kind of a softball question, but I'm kind of curious. What was your favorite part about developing a course in this way in comparison to the way that you all traditionally are developing courses? was the best. So <laughs> thanks, Elena. Um, so one of the really cool challenges was deciding from each program which SME would be appropriate because in a traditional setting of setting, you know, developing a course, you have a subject matter expert and an instructional designer. You have some program input. It's this very like process-oriented thing. 
And here we were going to have five SMEs all in different places, try to get them together virtually. And Charlotte and I in the room, Ellie in the room sometimes, and, and Mike coming in, which my favorite part was Mike trying to um, control the chaos of all of that. <laughs> it was fantastic. And Charlotte too, because it was, you know, quite interesting. So Mike would say, okay, so if we want to do all that, we'll have to do some of this like step-by-step -step stuff. So watching that process of all of these different SMEs across discipline, it was its own interdisciplinary sort of project. And it was very, very cool to see how people would come together and think about how education worked in this format, how nutrition worked in this format. It was just amazing to watch the SMEs work. Yeah, it was a wild ride. <laughs> um, I've, you know, I've, we, we instructional designers typically work with one person at a time, you know, and this, so this is the first time. I remember when I was told that I was going to be working on this course, I just kind of thought, wow, okay, I need to do some reading first, you know, because <laughs> you, know, you, you needed to have some, some tricks up my sleeve to do this. And, um, you know, there were things that, that I would do differently now, but um, just being able to work with this many people and, and try to manage that chaos was just a huge learning experience that I'm, I'm so happy to have in my back pocket now. So that's, yeah. Um, so one thing that I don't think Charla mentioned and is on our poster is the time frame in which we achieved this kind of crazy goal. And that is that although on the poster it says I think March to September, in, the truth of the matter is we didn't have our first meeting with SMEs and we didn't even have all the SMEs until what we just er, yeah, early May. Um, and the course started August 29th. And we're talking there are 13 people working on this course in some capacity. Um, and so I agree with both Monique and Mike in that it was really fascinating to see all different people from all different disciplines and from all over who were coming in virtually as well as um, you know, in here in Portland to come together and create this course. And I think that um, I had a couple favorite aspects. I tend to be a systems thinker, so really seeing how all of this fit together with all the other disciplines was really fascinating. Um, and so that was really exciting. But I also think just having this level of professional touch on a course is so unique. Um, and so something that is truly you know, really sets online apart is that it would be almost impossible, and we've joked about this, to get 13 academics in a room to agree on anything within that time frame. Um, but we were all very collegial and collaborative and took everyone's feedback and worked well together. And so I think the fact that we also pulled it off that quickly um, is kind of an interesting aspect of the process. I'm going to add my two cents because I, I, I can't help it. Uh, it was very fun to listen to all the fabulous ideas from across the spectrum of people who were involved. Um, I mean, I, I can remember saying many times, oh, what a great idea, what a great idea, and, it, and they truly were. And that meant that we really had to practice our interprofessional collaboration competencies because you can't do it all. Somebody, you know, had some, some ideas had to be chosen as the better ideas or the more functional uh, ideas for this particular project. Um, but I want to I want to tip my hat to Charlotte and Mike as well because really, without good leadership, it would never have come together in that time frame. I'm going to step in there too to talk about my favorite part because the whole process and as Mike said we learned a lot about what worked well and what we would probably do differently in the future but one of the things that I'm really enjoying now is seeing the data from the students and the instructors and seeing that alignment that the students really are starting to get our vision and that they're invested enough to take the time to explain things that would have helped them I achieve this course even better. And so things that we could consider in the future. So I'm having fun with the data now as it's ongoing. We'll be collecting more at the end of fall B and again in spring A. So we'll get even more feedback as we're going and make some revisions. So I'm curious because both Mike and Shala mentioned that you would, there are some things that you would do differently. Um, and I don't mean um, sort of improvement to the course that of course you will do, but what would you do differently in the development process? And are there any words of wisdom for people who would like to do similar things? So Sharla already mentioned this a little bit, um, but 
when we first started meeting with all the subject matter experts, it was sort of just like, you know, Charlotte would ask a question on how, do, how are we going to do this, and we would all sort of talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And, and we spent, I think, like four weeks brainstorming. And it was at that point that somebody realized, you know, Mary Lou needs to kind of, you know, lead this. <laughs> and I, I breathed this huge sigh of relief when that happened, and it went really smoothly after that. Um, so I think having, ha when you have a committee de developing a course, it's so helpful to have somebody sort of take the lead and, and have the other people sort of serve as consultants. And I think that that model's already being put into work yeah. in, in some other course development with, with, um, with multiple SMEs. Um, so that's, that's what I would do differently about it, is to start that from the very beginning. Yeah. I would just add to that uh, that we are considering for the next course where we're wanting to get feedback. Uh, the multiple SMEs, I think, are very helpful because it brings in so many different perspectives and it gives you, I think, a richer course experience for the students. Uh, but, and it was Monique that actually said, I acted as kind of the project manager to keep this moving, and I'm very much someone who likes to get a lot of ideas from people. And we were getting some wonderful ideas, and then Monique and I talked one time, she goes, okay, now it's time, we just have to decide. And so we set the date, we said, okay, these are all great ideas, this is the structure we're hearing from everybody, and then Mary Lou stepping up to take the lead on this is what we want to do. She, as a subject matter expert, being able to take in all the perspectives from the other SMEs, have those reflected in the actual description of what the students need to do within the course was really helpful. And so going forward, we are considering it more as a lead SME with consultation from other subject matter experts to help provide that perspective without some of the slowdown and that, as I said, the challenge of going from the conceptual to the concrete, making that a little bit clearer process. And you know, the good, oh, sorry, Richard, I just wanna add, the good news is that there are so many ways to um, collaborate, even when you have somebody taking the lead on the content, you know, everything was on the cloud, so other subject matter experts weighed right. in with comments and reviews and, you know, put in links to material that they thought would be appropriate. So. Um, I, don't, I don't think they felt shut out of the process. No, it was a very collaborative process, and I would add that, that working on a Google document where everybody could make comments and see it all the time, it was very transparent what was going on, and so it was clear that we were able to incorporate everybody. I just want to say that thank you all for this work. It's amazing. And it's something that, that I know has been percolating for a long time. And actually seeing it come together is, is really rewarding. And hearing about process improvements and process changes and really thinking outside the box, thinking outside the box in terms of how we consider what's within a program, what's program adjacent, what's, what were the nexuses of these really exciting stuff. So I'm just wondering, with all of that and all of those ideas generated, what's next? How are you going to keep any of this going and, and heading into, yes, uh-huh, but, but beyond and beyond this course? Because right. the things that you've done here, and given the, the unique nature and relationships within our college, can go any number of directions. So we've, we've obviously batted around ideas about what this might look like in different forms. We've talked about motivational interviewing, has a lot of intersects across programs. Most recently, um, we've been talking about what it would look like to have kind of a gender inclusivity in the health, allied health professions. So working with LGBTQ patients and reworking assessment forms, how do we work with that client population, um, seems like it would have you know, broad implications across all of our programs. I think we're in a unique situation because we are relatively disparate programs, right? We're social work, education, public health, health informatics, and nutrition. So it's not like we're all science-focused programs or all, you know, fine arts-focused programs. And so it is a little tricky to find those places. But I think what's really important is to look at, uh, you know, the competencies that are expected across all of our programs and start mining those for where there's intersects. Um, and so we can see where we can collaborate and then where it really does need to be degree-specific. I would add that one way that has helped us 
kind of parse these things out is by doing college-wide assessment as well as our individual assessments. So we really see the things that come across all programs, and that's how we can kind of zoom in or target those things to see what we can generate. And just to sort of bring this down to the ground, I, I honestly, Richard, I think we just need to listen to the students that are coming out of this course to see what their, what their experiences are and what is valuable for them and what wasn't, and then use that uh, to make strategic decisions about where we could possibly go next. Well, I think that that was our time, so um, we want to thank you all for listening for your great questions, and we're very excited to see this or similar work go forward. Thank you.